The CARES Act amends the Small Business Act, and what it does, it allows for more emergency and short-term lending, particularly between a covered period, which starts from February 15 to June 30th. Now, because the CARES Act amends the Small Business Act, it's important to note that the Triple P, the EIDL, anything that you're hearing from this relief effort is really an SBA loan and follows SBA guidelines, and there are some requirements. With the CARES Act amending the SBA, if you already have an SBA loan, turns out payments on those SBA loans will be deferred and it's not going to result in balloon payments. In other words, the loan is simply going to be due at a later period of time, at least another benefit of the CARES Act, employers, you get to defer your payroll employer side taxes until the end of 2021 and end of 2022. Now let's go over a few basics. There are a few acronyms that are floating, floating around. Let's get those acronyms figured out. Triple P, that stands for Payroll Protection Program. So when you're filing for a Triple P loan, you can submit your Triple P application to your private lender. This does not go to SBA. This, this goes to your bank. EIDL, Economic Injury Disaster Loan. It's not an EIDL loan. It's an EIDL. In economic Injury Disaster Loan, that is directly through SBA, then they'll kick your application out to a private lender. Let's talk about the main acronym, CARES Act. What does CARES stand for? Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act. How much money is in these programs? So in the Triple P, you have $349 billion allocated to the Treasury, and then for the EIDLs, you have up to $10 billion of economic aid available underneath that program. Now, a few of my entrepreneur friends have filed for the EIDLs and they still have not received their proceeds. There's something to note. Everyone's talking about the $10,000. That's not the loan itself. When you file an SBA, that, pro that process is a loan, but then part of the CARES Act, it issues an emergency grant, which is not, pay which is not repayable. In other words, you put in your loan for EIDL online through SBA, and you can potentially get up to $10,000 of free money, the emergency grant, back through the CARES Act. Another thing about the IDL, so now they're saying they're going to ask you how many employees you have. And what they're going to do is issue $1,000 of an emergency grant per employee you indicate up to $10,000. So what that means, what does that mean if you're self-employed, a business of one, a consultant, so my honest recommendation uh, is to indicate one employee because the SBA and the CARES Act doesn't specify what an employee is, what it means. And when you're talking about an employee and it's not defined and you're a self-employed individual and all the literature out there is indicating that self-employed individuals and consultants can go apply for an EIDL, it leads me to believe at least that you can indicate at least an employee headcount of one. Now, this money can be used for payroll costs and for rent, but then gets rolled into a triple P if you apply for that. Hey guys, just wanna also put out there that please be patient with your bankers, with the Small Business Administration, with as many people as possible, even people who are reporting on the information like me, because this is evolving so quick and so fast. Uh, I mean, the Treasury Department just issued additional guidance two nights ago. Uh, to clarify different questions that people have been having on these different programs. So this is very fluid. There's also some more headlines about an additional surplus of funds coming into the program. So there's there's just a lot going on. So just be patient, be resilient. Uh, plenty more updates and knowledge on the Triple P, EIDL, and CARES Act. Uh, I'm going to take a quick little break and get back on live in 20 minutes at 1.30.